It's time for another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas, the podcast covering the intersection of business, culture, entrepreneurship, and life in general here in the Ozarks. Whether you are considering a move to this area or trying to learn more about the place you call home, we've got something special for you. Here's our host, Randy Wilburn. Hey folks, and welcome to another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. I am your host, Randy Wilburn, and I'm excited to be here today with Philip Taldo, broker owner of Weikert Griffin Real, Real Estate here in Springdale, Arkansas. Uh, so excited that uh, we, we get a chance to speak with Mr. Taldo today. I, um, you know, as I told you before uh, in episodes prior, and I will say it again this episode, and I'll say it in the future, our goal with the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast is to bring the best people uh, that we can uh, to this show to kind of share with you what Northwest Arkansas is all about. And so uh, in my efforts to identify individuals that I think are worthy of the podcast, um, <laughs> I, I I talked to several people, and some of the same people said the same name, and that was Philip Taldo. And that's why we asked Mr. Taldo to come on the show today and just kind of share with us his glimpse of Northwest Arkansas and what it's all about. He's a a lifelong uh, Northwest Arkansan and somebody that has definitely made a difference in this area. He is um, part of the Highway Commission. Uh, He has his own real estate brokerage. He is part of the uh, the airport authority here in Northwest Arkansas for XNA, which is our airport. And, you know, he, he's done quite a bit in this area. And so, Mr. Taldo, I just welcome you to the show and thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Randy. Yeah. Glad to be here. Yeah. So we uh, we originally had started this podcast episode and I, I hadn't hit the record, but I had to hit re- the record button, but I hadn't hit the actual record button because you have to actually hit it twice. So uh, even seasoned podcast veterans make mistakes, folks. So, you know, that's just the way it is. And we had we had a good conversation going, but we replicated it for for you guys so that you don't miss anything. But anyway, long story short. Uh, Philip, I understand that you are originally from Tawny Town. And, yes. And, uh, you know, I'd love for you just to kind of share with our audience a little bit about you and your background and, and you know, just just tell us about yourself. I'd be happy to. Uh, Tawny Town is just a little community, Italian community west of Springdale. Uh, right now, today, it's probably about 2,500 people. Whenever I was growing up there, it was probably about 200 people. Wow. Um, we were close-knit. We, uh, My ancestors and the other folks there all came from the same area in Italy. And um, so there was a lot of commonality to, uh, to living there. Uh, we went to school. We had a little... Uh, uh, three classroom school there with eight grades in it when I started school. Uh, my wife today and myself started uh, the first grade together there. And um, that was 47 years ago. Wow. Wow. Uh, w- we grew up there. It was more like uh, uh, a family, if you will, mm-hmm. you know, that because everybody shopped at the same store, went to the same church. Uh, we were, uh, we, we just did everything together in that small community. Yeah. Yeah. Were you, now were you born here in the U S or were you, so you, I was you... born here and in, in actually in, in Fayetteville. Okay. All right. All right. So that your parents are originally from Italy. My my parents were born here. Okay. My grandparents were born in Italy. So you're second generation Sec- American. Okay. Yeah, I am. Okay. Uh, yes, second generation American, and and they really came from uh, from Italy around the turn of the century, around 1900. Wow. Okay. And uh, then uh, migrated up to. Northwest Arkansas. Wow. And I can imagine Northwest Arkansas in 1900, it was a much different place. You know, it was much different in a lot of ways. Yeah. And there's still a lot of similarities here. Right, right. We haven't grown too big for our britches, I guess. Right. So that's right. <laughs> that's that's right. interesting. So, okay. So, you you know, you grew up in Tawny Town, and um, 
obviously you married the girl of your dreams and have, have had a great family. I understand you have three kids and about nine grandchildren. Is that right? I've got three daughters and nine grandchildren, five granddaughters and four grandsons. Wow. That's awesome. That's awesome. So they keep us busy. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure they do. I'm sure they do. Now you, are you a university of Arkansas graduate? Well, um, I, I pulled up a little short of graduating, <laughs> to, if you look up my record, so right. I want to be accurate here. Okay, okay. Um, I did go to the university I, uh, for three years. I uh, got married uh, in the meantime there and found uh, my wife actually graduated, and she when it was a school teacher whenever we married, and... Uh, uh, it got things got a little tough. They made the teachers then made about fifty five hundred dollars a year. Oh, wow. So um, yeah. uh, I had to uh, lay out and <clears throat> get a job, thinking I'd go back, and uh, um, never went back. Yeah, no, I I totally get that. And you know, again, it's, it's there is uh, there's nothing wrong with that because a man's got to do what a man has to do. So you know, and taking care of their family is one of the number one priorities of that. So. Hey, that is the truth. And I made a lot of <laughs> a lot of lifelong uh, contacts and friends from the three years that I was down there. Okay, good, good. And you're a Razorback through and through. All, so. all the way. All the way, all yes. The way. Okay, well, woo pig. So. Yeah, woo pig suey. Yeah, I, I, um, well, th- that's great. I pre- appreciate you sharing that 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 part of it. So so tell me, um, what caused you to stay here? Why, why did you want to stay in Northwest Arkansas? Well, that, that's really a good question because, um, you know, it was a choice. You know, it wasn't something that I was born here and I just stayed here and I was too lazy to go anywhere else. Mm -hmm. It was a choice. My wife, uh, of course, had gone to the university. I went for the three years there. We got to know a lot of other people from outside of the area, and we uh, did a little traveling. We we knew there was other places than northwest Arkansas. Right. And uh, I remember... Uh, specifically uh, talking with Marianne uh, about uh, should we maybe move to Tulsa, yep. the big city, yeah. you know, from here, <laughs> or uh, uh, other areas within a couple of hundred mile radius and, and see what we could do there. And finally, I just sat down and said, you know, I just don't think I can – do as well somewhere else as I feel I feel that I could here. Yeah. You know, I've all, we've got we've got relationships, we got families. We went to school here. I feel like that we can leverage that and make a good life for ourselves right here. And begrudgingly, uh, she went along with me. Yeah. <laughs> so, but she soon uh, for better or for worse, right? For better or for worse. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, that that's awesome. I, I uh I it's interesting to hear that because as I as I look around and, and obviously the, the podcast listeners they, they can't see your office, but I mean there's a lot of there's a lot of really cool things in here and you know, I can I mean I can see that you are a busy man and, and there there is a lot going on and so certainly uh from from all for all intents and purposes, you made the right choice. Well, I believe that. Thank you for recognizing it. Yeah, That's yeah. for sure. You made the right choice, and and you've had it. You've actually had your hand, and a lot of different things that have helped to shape and mold you know, Northwest Arkansas. You and other individuals, but, absolutely. Uh, but but I mean, tell me about that that aspect of it, and what kind of lit the fire for you that helped you to say, you know what, I'm going to put my put my efforts towards this with the the highway commission and I, I see an opportunity here with the xna with the airport and i want to improve that because i know that bringing people here to northwest arkansas is a really important aspect of of what you know you're trying to do in general with this area but what what moved you to do that to step out and try those different things well honestly uh, you know i just paid attention uh and I, I paid attention to the people that that I admired the most, mm-hmm. and 
what kind of traits those individuals had, whether it was my uncle or whether it was my doctor or whether it was my football coach or or the insurance man that we used or, or the mayor of the city. Uh, what kind of traits did they emulate right. and what did they do? Why did I admire them? Yeah. You know, uh, and I... Uh, come to the conclusion that it's for uh, the 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 real thread that weaves its way through all of these people was their public service yeah and uh, they and uh, they were trusted yeah so I thought well that's what I'd like for my life yeah you know if I I want to uh, have a family, raise a family, I want them, I want my children to be proud of me. I want to be able to um, um, hopefully be somewhat of a role model to them. Yeah. Uh, and um, so that's what kind of led me to, and I got to say, opportunities from friends. They reached out. And uh, grabbed me and said, here, come do this with me. Come over here and work on this campaign with me. Travel around with us. Come over here and work at the uh, Regional Planning Commission with us. Help us plan things. Um, And my dad uh, was actually mayor in Tawny Town for 13 years. And, uh, you know, that was, uh, I saw what he did. I admired my dad. He was a a honest, uh, straight-up guy. Uh, Wasn't wealthy, but he worked hard and made a living for us four kids at home. And he had time to to give back to his community and serve as mayor uh, for 13 years. Wow. So it seems like, and, and again, I see I see this theme over and over again with a lot of the people that I talk to from here, but it just seems that that people tend to be very open and generous with their time and encouragement and advice and guidance. And it seems like you there was no shortage of that for you as you started out in your career and as you developed yourself. And I mean, I look at what you've been able to accomplish and the number of years that you've been in public service, even as a private business owner, you've benefited from right. that. Yes. Um, what does that say about Northwest Arkansas as a whole in your mind? I will tell you that um, uh, Northwest, the people in Northwest Arkansas are not selfish. Yeah. They uh, they like to see people succeed, and they like to be uh, involved with the people that are succeeding in whatever it is they do in business. And um, uh, you know, I can say that um, uh, definitely my help from friends and. Uh, and guidance from different people that I had admired and and trusted uh, went a long way to to moving me forward. Yeah, yeah. So, wow. And you've seen a, a lot of change. Uh, Absolutely. And you're, you're not an old guy, but I mean, you've seen a lot of change. Um, you know, I, I think about specifically just people tell me about what it was like living here prior to like, cause I've only been here for five years where people tell me what it was like, like driving back and forth from Little Rock to Northwest Arkansas. Absolutely. Pre Bobby Hopper tunnel. Pre Bobby Hopper tunnel. <laughs> yes. And you can remember that. And you, you knew yes. that I'm assuming that were you on the highway commission at the time when that, um, uh, no, I wasn't, but I knew Bobby. Okay. I okay. bought my first car from Bobby Hopper. He okay. was uh he was uh had a Ford dealership here in Springdale. Right. And he had this slogan uh don't say Ford, say Bobby Hopper Ford. <laughs> <laughs> and uh his his car dealership was just across the street from uh the furniture and appliance uh place where my dad worked. Okay. 
and I ended up buying my first car from Bobby Hopper, a 1969 Mustang Ooh. GT, you nice. know. Um, and uh, so I got to know Bobby Hopper, and uh, I, I'm still good friends with Bobby Hopper. Oh, that's you know, awesome. he's, uh, he's retired, him and his wife Lois. And uh, I told Bobby uh, a while back, uh, I said, Bobby, you know, 100 years from now, people are going to know the name Bobby Hopper, but they're probably not even going to know who was governor whenever that tunnel was put in, you know. Right, right. And uh, he, uh, he's just a great guy and yeah. a great public servant and a great businessman. Yeah. And, and, I, and I think it's – and everybody has told me, and, of course, I've experienced it myself driving through that tunnel quite a bit, that that was a game changer for this area. When, Absolutely. When that, when that highway opened up and connected uh, 40 with this the rest of this area here. Right. It was the old – what we call 71 highway 71 and it you know snaked through every community along the way between here and little rock right you know yeah my uh my uh, best friend whenever i was in grade school his dad worked for a winery out at tawny town back in that we had a lot of grapes out there mm -hmm. from the italian heritage and everything and and he would haul loads of uh, cases of wine to Little Rock to get it distributed uh, out throughout the state. Yeah. And my friend and myself used to ride in that old two-ton truck <laughs> bouncing along uh, down 71, and it took us uh, over four hours to, to get down right. to Little Rock and then uh, – um, bounce our way uh bounce our way back again but we snaked through every little little town between here and little rock and they all had a stoplight or two right so it just took a while yeah yeah so it's it's definitely a big difference and so that that expanded things and i know that the you know the expansion at the airport has helped quite a bit as well um the and, airport has just been um amazing yeah you know there's probably some signature things and, and I know there are signature things that really have helped grow Northwest Arkansas. And, and the first thing I'll mention is uh, Beaver Lake okay, and the water. You know, the, the people here, the pioneers here in the uh, 50s uh, uh, realized that it – we know there was a lot of canning factories around because we had it was rural. We had grapes, we had apples, we had peaches and strawberries, and um, then we started getting poultry. And to to process all these things, it took a lot of water yeah. in the in the factories. Right. So it was critical that they had a, uh, a good quality. Uh, source of drinking water, and right. and uh, that's when they promoted and and built uh, Beaver Lake in the early '60s. Yeah, and there's a city at the bottom of Beaver Lake. Well, there's uh, Mountain A. Mountain yeah. A. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. so, yeah. We used to go to. Uh, that's a whole nother story. story. You don't want me to get into <laughs> that. But anyway, look up the name Coin Harvey. Okay. If you ever want some interesting reading, he. Uh, he built this place that's underwater over there now, but you're right. It's right. there. Yeah. And, um, but, uh, you know, then the next thing I would say is, uh, thanks to, thanks to Bobby Hopper, uh, and, uh, a lot of other like forward thinking people in, here in Northwest Arkansas, uh, they uh, promoted the idea of getting four-lane highways here. Right. You know, right. uh, the first uh, the first one through here was uh, connecting uh, Northwest Arkansas to Tulsa. Right, and that wasn't by accident. You know, Oklahoma was eager to get their part done to the border because there was a lot of people coming from Northwest Arkansas to Tulsa to shop. Yeah, you know, we didn't have 
restaurants then. Yeah. We didn't have department stores. <laughs> You know, one or here and there. You know, it was it was a big deal to go to Tulsa. Yeah. You know, so we got the, when we got that four lane, it was easier. People made more trips, and it worked great. And then later on in the, um, uh, I guess early nineties, uh, uh, interstate. It was five forty then. That's forty nine. Right. Uh, connected all the way from, um, made the connection to uh, Little Rock, four lanes all the way. Yeah, yeah. So that was a big deal. Those 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 two highways right there really added. And then the third thing that has really moved the ball forward is the airport. Yeah. We got back around to the airport yeah, finally. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And these companies that that came in, um, uh, Mr. Walton, Mr. Sam Walton started here, had his five and 10 cent store here. Mm -hmm. I used to go in and buy baseball cards with the bubble gum packages mm -hmm. from him and his brother, Bud, when they had a five and 10 store here in Springdale. Right. And uh, J.B. Hunt, Mr. Hunt, uh, Started his business here, started uh, come here and started hauling rice hulls from Stuttgart to Northwest Arkansas for chicken bedding yeah. and bought bought an old trucking company with eight trucks and 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 now it's JB Hunt Hunt, right. Hunt Transport. And then the Tysons, you know, they started out the poultry business hauling live uh, poultry uh, in the 20s up to uh, Chicago for the live market, you know. And that's how they started. That, none, of these, none of these big Fortune 200 companies that's here now were somewhere else and moved here. Right. They, they're born and bred right here in northwest Arkansas. Yeah. They're in the fiber of the country here. Yeah. Countrysides. Right. And everybody has a story about all of them. Yeah. You know, and it's funny you say that. I mean, you, and you say that with a lot of pride, I can tell. Um, and it's, it's, I've talked to a lot of people, and this is one of the few areas, and this is something that I, I, I really want people to understand about Northwest Arkansas. There's a, a lot of super successful people here. There and are. they don't wear it on their sleeve. They don't. They're just, they are just regular folk. They, they are... They are regular folk, and uh, you know it's it's really amazing to me that we've been able to um, uh, it, it's carried on into the next generation. Yeah. yeah, and and you know all three of those big companies there uh, are <laughs> even more rooted now uh, than they were whenever it went from the founders into the next generation and now now we're getting into we call them g3s <laughs> third generation waltons and tysons right. and hunts and right. and uh and they're all staying here and they're expanding here yeah. and they love it here and um and then they've made a lot of uh of uh successful people from their companies. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's just been unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it's, it's really good. And I, I think the, the gist of what everything that, that you've said and what we're trying to say here is that there are tremendous opportunities here and there's a lot, there's a, there's a lot to do in Northwest Arkansas. And I think people from the outside don't really know it's a, it's, it's a great secret, but people here that get it, and I, I, I like to think I get it, but I've just realized it even more so and in, in just in doing this podcast and talking to great people like you that, that there's, there's still so much more to be done. There really is. And, and you know, we don't, uh, we don't just rest on our laurels here. You know, everybody is, has the, uh, how can I say it? Uh, growth state of mind. Mm -hmm. But whenever I say that, and, and even for myself, one of the important things is is that I'd hate, hate, hate to see Northwest Arkansas just grow, 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 and then it not be a good place for my 
grandkids and great grandkids and so on. You know, um, uh, I've said this several times to my wife and uh, and to my kids. I said, you know, I don't um, I don't want my great grandkids saying, oh, uh, great granddad Philip made a lot of money here, but boy, they sure didn't leave us much. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Not the money. I'm right. talking about the countryside yeah, and, yeah, and exactly. the living uh, uh, conditions here. So, you know, we want, we got to build good schools. We got to build good infrastructure yeah. and we got to do smart growth. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And that, and that's an important thing. And I, you know, even in my time being in Fayetteville, I've, I understand how important it is to grow smartly and, and to really take your time as you're, planning what the next 15 or 20 years are going to look like. I mean, Absolutely. The, the statistics say that we, we could be at, uh, at 800,000 people and as, as far as a metropolitan area is concerned by 2040. That's just 21 it's, years away. Exactly. Yeah. And just to kind of put that in perspective a little bit. Now, this may not mean much to um, maybe somebody that's not from Arkansas, but we've got four congressional districts in northwest Ar- in in Arkansas. Right, the, divides up the state evenly as far as population. Uh, in that next twenty years, um, Washington and Benton County is going to be their own congressional district. Wow, wow, that's, that's pretty. Uh, yeah. And, you know, you look at it now and they're all, you know, I think in our district now there's probably, I can't remember, 14 or 18 counties in in our third congressional district. In 20 years, there's going to be two counties in this congressional district. Man. So um, uh, just something to really kind of put things in perspective. uh, as far as the population growth, um, the last uh, nine years, there has the state of Arkansas grew eighty six thousand in population. Mm-hmm. Seventy two thousand of that was in Washington and Benton County. Wow. wow! I mean, that just gives you. Uh, uh, a perspective of how big that is. Yeah, that's huge. And 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 obviously that's I mean we 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 would love to focus on the whole state, the whole natural state, but we focus primarily on as I've said before on this podcast Benton and Washington County because that that pretty much makes up northwest Arkansas. Sure. So, and it's but it's a big area though. And thank goodness for Madison County and uh uh uh, Newton County, where we have the Buffalo River over there, right. the Mulberry River. We have canoeing. We've got uh, a lot of hiking and uh, just a great recreational area to play. Yeah, play in Absolutely. all the time, and, and and plenty of people do too. Yeah, a lot yeah. of trout fishing, bass fishing. You know, it's just a great place. As I, as I like to call it when I was growing up, it's a sportsman's paradise. It is that. It is that. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, listen, I, I, I really appreciate you taking the time to chat with me. I wanted you, I wanted you to leave uh, the audience with just a couple of uh, a quick ideas and maybe some encouragement. Um, since you have your finger on the pulse of real estate here in Northwest Arkansas, uh, what, what are your thoughts about people coming here to this area, relocating from another part of the country? What, what one piece of advice would you give them? to consider um, as they, you know, they, they look at Northwest Arkansas as a place to, to come. Keeping in mind, mind you, that Northwest Arkansas is actually a, a, a big destination for retirees. It is. In addition to maybe I'm coming down here to work at Walmart or J.D. Right. Hunt or Tyson, but I could also be coming down here to retire. Absolutely. So, so with that in mind, with those different generational generations represented in that picture, what would be your one piece of advice for anyone coming to Northwest Arkansas from a real estate perspective? From a real estate perspective, I can say that it's still a bargain here. Yeah, owning a owning a piece of the pie is still a good deal in Northwest Arkansas. Yeah, and uh, you know it 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 
I, I do look at the prices that uh, we see in a lot of other parts of the the country, and um, you know we're creeping up. I've got to admit that, but we're not anywhere near, near yeah. uh, what it is in in a lot of areas. So come here, look at it, go online, Google, look at look at look at the prices yourself Absolutely. and compare it you know yeah. we just have a, a lot of people that come in here and i hear it every day they say i that that house over there 3 or 400,000 dollars for instance which is a big house yes, here exactly would have cost me a million dollars in california yeah or more or more yeah. you know and uh you know, so we you really get a, a good bang for your buck. It doesn't have to be. You don't have to spend three or four hundred thousand either. No, our median uh, price range is about two hundred and thirty thousand. Exactly. For and that's a three bedroom, two bath brick house with a two car garage. So that's not too shabby. No, it's not. It's definitely not. No, I, I, I tell you, I was blown away by the prices when I got here. And coming from Boston, of course, I'm I was used to seeing prices Absolutely. through the roof so yes. when i came here i was like i'll take two i'll take yes. two of everything <laughs> so yeah no but i mean that that's that's a really good point and i appreciate you sharing that because i think people need to understand the and have a better perspective about the opportunities for real estate here which uh, they, they, they are plentiful and they uh, are plentiful yeah so if if um and then finally i, I want to lean on your italian heritage here um in terms of a really good italian meal in northwest arkansas What's your go-to restaurant? I know I'm putting you on the spot. My go-to restaurant is at home. <laughs> right. My well, wife may I, listen to this, so I want to make sure <laughs> yeah, that I'm absolutely. politically correct. No, I, I, well, that, there's several of how them. How big is that, your table at home? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so. You're welcome. Come thank on you, over. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> they, uh, well, I got to say, there's a couple of places out in Tawny Town, the Venetian Inn and uh, Mama Z's yep. out there yep. that are kind of go-to places. There's uh, Italian uh, places that we particularly like in Fayetteville. Uh, Pesto Cafe sure. is one of our one of our favorites, okay. and uh, you know, uh, there's just no bad Italian food uh, at the from my perspective. Right. Um, right. But so it'd be hard for me to. Uh, Omit anybody. On yeah. That. No, I got you. But those, you, you actually pick some really good ones. So, yeah. yeah. No, Pesto Cafe is excellent. So yeah. we'll definitely put those in the show notes um, to share that with folks. If, if anyone listening to this podcast wanted to connect with you in any way, whether from a real estate perspective or just in general, what's the best way for them to reach out to you? You mean as far as... Just uh, talking to you or reaching out to your sure. company? Well, I've got, uh, you know, my by by phone or by email okay. or text message and okay. and so we have i have most of your contact information yes. here so um you you can also check out um philip's company weikertgriffin.com that's uh w e i c h e r t griffin g r i f f i n dot com. You can visit that site and find out more information about uh, Phillips Company. They do uh, both residential and commercial. Absolutely. Um, so, and they're 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 based here, right here on the border of of Springdale and Fayetteville. So easy to find, easy to get to, and uh, I'll make sure that all of Phillips' contact information is on the show notes for this particular episode. Uh, but please reach out to him if you have any questions. And uh, if you're coming to Northwest Arkansas, I can't think of a better person to talk to about Northwest Arkansas than Philip Taldo. So, Philip, thank you so much for uh, letting me into your office to spend some time with you. And this was really enlightening. And I, I look forward to us getting back together again in the future. Well, Randy, I appreciate the opportunity and I've really enjoyed it. And uh, I'm uh, looking forward to get to know you even better now. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Well, there you have it, folks. Uh, another episode in the books uh, here with Philip Taldo from Weikert Griffin Realty uh, here in Springdale, Arkansas. Really uh, exciting to uh, to be able to share a little bit of his story and what he has done here uh, over a number of years. But there's still so much more to be done in Northwest Arkansas. And so each and every week, we're going to continue to bring uh, some really great information to you. We've got some, some plans uh, in the books for some amazing people that are going to be uh, coming on the show, some amazing organizations that will be coming on the show to talk more about themselves. But uh, this is just a glimpse 
of, of what is to come. And we, we appreciate Mr. Taldo so much for taking some time today. So we hope you enjoyed this episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas, the podcast, and we will see you next week. I'm your host, Randy Wilburn. Bye for now. We hope you enjoyed this episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. Check us out each and every week, available anywhere that great podcasts can be found. For show notes or more information on becoming a guest, visit IamNorthwestArkansas.com. We'll see you next week on I Am Northwest Arkansas.